Hi there, I'm Vince, and in this video, I'm in my hallway. And the reason I'm in my hallway is going to be testing out my broadband system. I've got a full fibre network, comes directly into the apartment, down this little wire to the devices behind me. And what I'm going to be doing is explaining why I chose the particular device I chose and doing some tests on it to find out what Wi-Fi speeds you can get off a full fibre network. So this is my actual setup. The fibre network wire comes in and connects to this box. That then connects to the router and they're both plugged in here. The router can be connected either by LAN connection, but that would mean a series of wires around the apartment, or you can use the Wi-Fi. And it's those Wi-Fi speeds I'm going to be testing with some various devices. Now Tube wouldn't be familiar to many people because Tube is a new startup providing these services in the Southampton area. So why did I choose them? Well, it all comes down to speed. And the average UK broadband download speeds hit 64 megabits per second in 2020. This actually surprised me because my experience, many people have got much lower. And of course, being an average, this would be the case. Now, the biggest player in the market is BT. And BT, their standard broadband, shows an average speed between 5 and 10 megabits per second. It's obviously what a lot of people can experience, which obviously isn't very good, particularly if you want to watch high definition television or YouTube channels. Now BT do actually do a full fiber network. They're rolling it out at the moment, but unfortunately it's not yet in my area in Southampton. So obviously I couldn't consider that. The major competitor to BT in the UK at least is Sky Media. You know the ones, that Australian company that came and stole all our football and uh, also the best cinema releases. Well, they do a range of broadband downloads. As you can see, they range from 11 to 145 megabits per second, which they call their ultra fast. And the third player on the UK scene is Virgin Media. Now, like BT, and Sky, they offer a range of services. As you can see, they're showing between 362 and an incredibly fast 1,104 megabits per second, which is true gigabit fiber broadband. Now, what you must appreciate when looking at these numbers, of course, is they are all quoted averages. Now, this is all going to be dependent on your particular setup, with fiber being the most likely to meet expectations. And like the Virgin having a high speed of 1,104, Tube can get pretty much close to that with a promise of 900 megabits per second. But of course, that's only half the story. Download speeds are all very well. And as I said, the average UK download was 64 megabits per second. But to have truly fast internet, what you want is a fast upload as well. You can see the UK average is in 2020 we're only 14 megabits per second and that's not really very good if you want to transfer a lot of data move photos into a cloud or even upload high definition youtube videos so let's have a look back at those averages and we can see that bt although showing 5 to 10 megabit download was only showing an average 1 megabit per second upload we hop over to sky and they have various upload speeds and they only go up to 27 megabits per second which is a lot less than their 145 megabits download. Virgin are the same even with their gigabit fiber broadband at 1104 megabits per second they only have an upload speed of 52. Obviously this isn't very good but Tube and the reason I chose them not only had a 900 megabits per second download speed, but also a 900 megabits per second upload speed. And that was the clincher. So let's start the Wi-Fi test then. And the first one will be on an Apple laptop. 
which is a 2009 13-inch white unibody MacBook. You'll notice the video has been sped up to two times normal speed. The first test we get is a download of 91 megabits per second. Then it runs an upload speed. This comes out at 119 megabits per second. This laptop's running OS 10 Yosemite. There's no app installed, so we're using speedtest.net via Apple's inbuilt Safari browser. The second download, a bit fast, 102 megabits per second. With an upload, fairly similar, 115 megabits per second. Our Wi-Fi speeds are based on the standards 802.11a through to n on this particular laptop. Our third download, 99 megabits per second with an upload of 136 megabits per second. So let's add this to a spreadsheet and we see averages download 97 megabits per second and upload 124 megabits per second. So next up, we have another laptop. This one, the HP laptop, a 2015 Pavilion 14, which is a 14 inch Chromebook. Again, you'll see I've sped up the video to two times. And our first download, that comes out 218 megabits per second. And our first upload, which runs straight into it, 198 megabits per second. Now we're running Google Chrome on this one. Again, there's no app installed, so we're using speedtest.net via an inbuilt Chrome browser. And the second download test, 208 megabits per second, with a corresponding upload, 197 megabits per second. Now feel free to like and subscribe on this video. While we run the third download test here, 206 megabits per second, with an upload speed of 198 megabits per second. Now we'll add these figures to our spreadsheet. We can see averages for this laptop with a download speed of 211 megabits per second and an upload of 197 megabits per second. So we'll try a different device this time. This time we'll use a Samsung smartphone. This particular one is a 2014 Galaxy Note 4. And you might also notice I haven't particularly sped the footage up here, it's all at normal running speed. So, the first download test in around the 90s, and it settles down like they always do 92 megabits per second. You notice it hasn't gone into an upload test. So, We'll run a second one. This particular phone is running Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. There's no app installed, so we're using speedtest.net again via the inbuilt Chrome mobile browser. The second test download settles out at about 115 megabits per second. Again, doesn't do an automatic upload speed. Not sure why. Anyway, the Wi-Fi speed capabilities on this phone, which is an 802.11a through to n stroke AC on the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz band, provides a third download test. And that runs out 108 megabits per second. Again, no upload. So we'll add these figures to the spreadsheet so we can see our download average is 105 megabits per second, but no upload. Right, now I want to try something a little bit different. A different device, if you like. I want to try a smart TV. Obviously, it's difficult putting a smart TV just here, so I have to leave it where it is. It's only about 10 feet away from me over there. It's also in direct line of sight. So let's see what download speeds we can get with a TV. 
something a bit different this time. This time a Sony Smart TV. In particular a 2018 Bravia KD 55 AF8 55 inch OLED. Again you'll see that the footage has been sped up two times. And it's rather crude because I'm using the remote control rather than the mouse to try and get this to go. So, the first download speed, that is 59 megabits per second, which is plenty for things like Netflix, in fact for 4K YouTube videos. We have an upload speed, the first test, 114 megabits per second. This particular TV is running an Android system, version 8.0.0, .0 .0. And again, we're using speedtest.net via the inbuilt browser app. And this test, download, 63 megabits per second. Upload, 101 megabits per second. And I think these speeds were slightly being affected by the excess adverts they were trying to show all the way around the screen. Bearing in mind, smart TVs don't have really fast processors. Anyway, the third download... And it's 57 megabits per second with an upload just 89 megabits per second we'll add these figures to the spreadsheet and we can see averages for the tv download 60 megabits per second with an upload 102 megabits per second right now i'm going to try my current phone which is an apple smartphone which is a 2017 iphone 10. Again, you'll notice that the footage is normal speed, hasn't been slowed down or sped up. And this time we're getting some quite large numbers. Our first download, 580 megabits per second. With an upload, also in the 500s, 506 megabits per second. Just run the test again. Now, this particular phone is running iOS 14.3 and we're using the downloaded Ookla speed test app. This time, the download shot round 572 megabits per second with an upload 496 megabits per second. The Wi-Fi in this particular phone is 802.11ac. Third test. Download speed, again, high, 568 megabits per second, and keep into the half gigabyte, an upload of 512 megabits per second. So, let's add this to a spreadsheet, and we find averages of download 573 megabits per second, upload 505 megabits per second, or well over half a gigabyte. Now we move on to my tablet which is a recent purchase, an Apple tablet, a 2020 iPad Air 4th generation. Again, the footage will run at normal speed. I expect similar results to the phone. So, first download test. And it's again in the 500s. Download 556 megabits per second. And upload speed 584 megabits per second. Again, this tablet is running iOS 14.3 and we're using the downloaded Ookla speed test app. So, the second test. Going to be similar to the first. Download 532 megabits per second and a nice and speedy upload 586 megabits per second. Uh, the Wi-Fi is based on an 802.11ax with simultaneous 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bandwidth. So third and final test for this particular device. 
Download first of all as usual, 516 megabits per second. With an upload speed, 579 megabits per second. So we'll transfer all that information over to the spreadsheet. And you'll see averages 535 megabits per second, a bit slower than the phone. And upload 583 megabits per second, a bit faster than the phone. So finally, we have another Apple laptop. This one, a 2014 MacBook Pro Retina 15-inch display. Now, you'll notice the footage done at normal speed. So, let's see what this particular laptop can do. And straight away, we have quite an impressive download speed. It's reaching over 700, then towards the 800s, into the 800s, and in fact settles out at 807 megabits per second download. The even more impressive upload it's a massive 910 megabits per second. This particular laptop is running Mac OS 11.1 Big Sur. I'm using a downloaded Ookla speed test app. Again, this is on Wi-Fi. It's not connected. No wires between the, this and the tube device. Second test, download 818 megabits per second. And upload again into the 900s, settles out 908 megabits per second. This laptop runs on the 802.11a through to n stroke ac bands. So the third test, 712, not quite as impressive, download, but an upload still in the 900s and it reaches the best 914 megabits per second. So let's add that to a spreadsheet. We can see a satisfyingly large averages. Download 779 megabits per second. Upload 911 megabits per second. Actually exceeding the promised connection speeds. So, in conclusion, am I happy with it? And the answer is yes. I think they provide a really good service. It's been reliable and I'd recommend it, but obviously only when it comes into your area. So if you like this video, please put a like on it, maybe put a subscription, then you'll see some of my other videos. And why not add a comment below? Thanks for watching. Please note that all these tests are only as recorded at the time and cannot necessarily be guaranteed or replicated again. Thanks very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye.